Well, my name is Michael Lambie. I'm the owner of Michael Lambie Interiors, um, which is pretty much a full service boutique uh, interior design. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I struggle with that because that's what we do. We do interior designs, we do full service for homes and businesses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera but we do so much more, right? Um, but it's right. an interior design studio where I'm located in Oakville, Ontario. Oh, you're in Oakville? Yeah, yeah. Why don't I think you were like on the other side of Toronto? Like, you're like. I'm on the border of Mississauga and Oakville right now. I've oh, been yeah. there. I know where Oakville is. <laughs> You've heard of it. <laughs> no, no. My, um, my son's great-grandmother lived in Oakville until she passed away a few years ago. Oh, okay. Great-grandmother. Oh, wow. So she lived a long, full life. Beautiful. She was 99. Ooh, nice. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's pretty wild. So small yeah. world again. There you go. There you go. Mm. The, where, um, where, are you, it, where are you, Misty, right now? You're, are you yeah. in the east? I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh. Directly south, south from you guys. <laughs> yes. Yep, yep. Okay. We're having southern style weather today. So. Yeah, so are we. We are like in the 30s. I guess that's yeah. almost the 90s, I, I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, it's brutal We're right now. Mid to high 90s. I think it's supposed to be 96 today, which, yeah. I mean, it's a scorcher for this this area, but. I'm going to take it. I've take got my it, plants. I'm in my That's yard. It. I can't That's complain. It. Nice. The, um, so, Michael, we were just asking you to say, like, what you do. Like, there's so many times in this space where I ask people to say, like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And in this mm -hmm. fitness industry, I could say I am – uh, applies instructor, uh, personal trainer, sport conditioning specialist. I work with weight loss and posture and this and that. We do all the things, right? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, right? how do you not encompass everything when you're dealing one-on-one -on -one with somebody, right? Because uh, nobody's singular and therefore what you bring and how you affect people is not singular. So yeah, it expands so beyond that for sure. Right. Is there something that excites you about like when someone comes up and they have like one type of thing where you're just like, let's go. This is my favorite thing to work with. I honestly, no, I think what I enjoy most about what I do, it's, it's, I get to do so many things. Um, my brain is just all over the place all the time. I like to believe I'm multifaceted and, uh, and I get to express that in so much different areas. So whether we're doing decorating or renovating or envisioning a space just a uh, finishing a rent a lot of times i get called in on on, on projects that are 80 percent finished and then they're stuck they're like how do we put finishing touches on that or uh they all excite me it's different yeah because i don't yeah. know where it's going to take me right so quite honestly i can't put my finger on it obviously the more i get to touch the better yes but what area it doesn't really matter nice very cool how I'm interested in knowing, because I did scope your IG, I'm really interested in knowing what it was in you that, because we you know interior design is what you do now, but mm -hmm. you transitioned and you said something, I meant to write the quote down, but I didn't. Um, but basically it was, you know, you knew you needed to change paths and you yeah. took the path yeah. That was not necessarily the path that you planned or even really the path that you were sure you were going to appreciate, but you did it. And yeah. I think that's such an important conversation for where we are right now, because a lot of people are transitioning to nowhere and they feel like they failed or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. I'd love to just chip into this with you. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. I spent most of my life kind of as the advice guy, the big brother to people and having the answers. And I've kind of scripted out my life, what I, how I saw it going. And I was following that path. I mean, not to get too, too, too deep, but I had was married with three cars, beautiful house, two kids, my dream job, partner, et cetera, et cetera. And on paper, it was perfect and it, I was checking the boxes I achieved things that I wanted to do with music with my art with with different things I was just kind of checking the boxes and and then, and at some point I realized that if I'm checking the boxes and I've done everything I should be elated I should be walking in bliss I should be living a life of like I'm on cloud nine and that wasn't what I was experiencing now I wasn't unhappy 
but there was so much more that I could feel and experience that I was aware of. And I realized my script wasn't bringing me there and wasn't going to bring me there. And therefore yeah. there's a, there's a script, there's a possibility that exists that I, I'm not tapping into. And so that just meant I had to get off my script. <laughs> and so I had yeah. to surrender. And, and for me, that was a major shakeup in my life. Uh, separation, leaving the partnership, selling my shares, starting something brand new. And for the first time in my life, I didn't have a script or a plan or a plot. I just knew it was different, right? And that, that, took, that took some time and it was scary. And it was realizing um, that I had to rely, live in faith. Um, you can call it the universe, call it God, call it God. <laughs> but I believe that it was a, there was a power that was stronger, had a better vision that I needed to, to kind of let go in and follow. So not to get too, too, too deep. Once I did that, it freed me up, right? It didn't yes. limit me to my tunnel vision. No matter how wide of a scope I thought I had, it was really still a tunnel vision, right? Once it freed me up, all of a sudden I started experiencing some amazing things. Oh my gosh, and oh my, this is possible. Oh, holy cow. So the more I let go, the more I started just falling into things that challenged me, but excited me and brought me in directions I never dreamed I would go. That is... Fire. Yeah, I can relate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, and, and that's, I mean, that's uh, I have a similar story of just being able to recognize that sense of having control, letting go of that control. And um, mm -hmm. in my, my relationship with my wife, she's the adventurer, right? So where I would say uncertainty, she would say adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so with my girlfriend right now, who I live with, uh, we're the opposite. So I'm the adventurer. I'm the one that thinks she's more than nine to five and works in finances and structured and very successful at what she does. And I'm like, let's create, <laughs> let's create and yeah. see what happens because I, I, I know there's, like I said, there's more potential there. So, so I shouldn't say more potential. I mean, there's a different route and for me. Yep. This route is, is for me. Yeah. I, I get that too. I, I too am the adventurer and, you know, thank goodness for, those who are more willing to, you know, walk the path, because I mm. think that they serve as grounds, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's one thing to be out here willy nilly, just taking the next adventure as it comes. But even the wildest heart needs a little bit of an anchor. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. my, my partner, Glenn, who I've lived with for a thousand years. I mean, he's definitely my anchor, but he also <laughs> recognizes that I have to fly sometimes. Yeah. You just yeah. have yeah. to let me just do it. Because if not, I get caught in that cage. And, and that is that is the worst kiss of death for an adventurer when you're on the path because you're checking the boxes and you're supposed yeah. to. Yeah, you know, if, if for me, I mean, it, it really applies to even what I do right now because... I've, I've worked in advertising. I've, I had a record label. I, I co-published a, ma a music magazine for five years. I, I, I ran a graphic design company. So I've done a lot in the creative space. Um, and this is different. So I got into real estate and I started buying real estate with a few partners. We started an investment company and we're just very passively buying and renting out and flipping the odd ones. And I, a spark went off, right? And um, so when I started down this path, I realized um, and I, I left my old career and I started doing this full time. I realized what was an interesting to me about real estate was the creation of space. And once again, I could be creative, but in a different way, created for profit, yes. created to affect in people's lives, which really revealed itself for me. So I started this company where I was actually not just doing it for myself and my company, it was for other people. And then I just started discovering everything. One, I discovered that I was terrified and I was intimidated and, and I didn't really know what I was supposed to bring and how I was supposed to show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, yes. I went back to this controlled answered sky instantly. I took this huge leap. I spread my wings. And when I landed, I, I did this again, bottle back up to, again. <laughs> <laughs> went to my default of yep. speak the way you speak and say and da -da -da and da -da -da. And I felt limited again. And, and I started running into areas where I definitely wasn't being creative. And then it hit me and I realized, okay, I'm, I'm kind of faking this. I'm, there's one client and she doesn't know. And I'm going to, I'm going to, 
I want to sit down and just really have a real conversation with to share what I experienced with her. So there's a big project. It was pretty intimidating. It was up in the scope and they were, we were taking this very nice cottage into a massive retirement home. So it was going like, I'm guessing these numbers, but it was like 2,500 square foot cottage, which is nice to like a 4,000 square foot retirement home. Beautiful project. And she put a lot of faith in me. And obviously I said, yes, and I did it. And I was really just trying to be professional and so on and so forth. And I was running into little roadblocks because in my limited scope, was early in my career, I didn't have the answers that she needed was turning me to. And it was weighing on me. And then I was taking these courses and I realized that's because I was showing up with this script. And the script didn't have all the plot lines that I needed, <laughs> right? So I decided one day, and she was an amazing person. She was really uh, easy to be with and so on and so forth. And I decided one day, you know what? I'm going to show up today as not as this interior designer that she thinks I am. I'm going to show up as the artist who's experienced in renovating yes. properties. Come on and now. I did that. And she, it was incredible the way she just related to me differently. And our relationship just kind of opened up. We went shopping for a couple of days. And it was the most amazing experience. We were maybe over halfway through a project. So we spent months together already. And instantly we just bonded and we just started motoring and the, the project blossomed. And I was able to kind of create being my self, the guy who didn't have all the answers, but who was creative. And I don't know, but I'm going to figure this out. I got this idea. Let's do this. Let's do this. And it, and it yeah. freed me up and we connected. So I mean, she wanted to invite my kids and I up that we spend the weekend up. But anyway, we just bonded. We were able to connect on a different level. And that was always there for me, but I limited that relationship. And when I came out of this project, I was like, oh my gosh, I almost missed the one opportunity to meet this amazing woman and connect with her on that yes. way. Two, I was limiting what I was offering her as, a, as an artist. Forget the designer part, as an artist. I was limiting what I was bringing. And three, I got so much out of this. Like this was mm. incredible. And I said, oh my gosh, if I just started showing up well, it wasn't a debate anymore. I'm going to show up now like this all the time and just be this guy, this black guy from Jaden Finns, who's doing this 4,000 square foot house in the right. Spoka, right? So what? I, why can't I? I don't have to be anything else and just do that. And when I get to show up like that, then it was incredible. And that's what opened me up to now I start painting for clients. I start doing, sometimes I would do photography and put stuff up because that's who I am. I'm a painter, yeah. I'm an artist. And I get to bring that. Get it. It really get launched it. my career in a direction where I got chills right now. <laughs> where yeah, man. Just... <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> well, where okay. I just said, man, wow. that's... Okay, let me shut up. No, no, I'm, I, there. no I'm, I'm sure Misty wants to pounce on this too, but <laughs> the what happened there, which I witnessed is that you changed how you saw yourself. Yes. It's not like what how she saw you that made the changes. When you changed how you saw yourself and brought that person to the table. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. Is it that or is it that you just allowed yourself to be? Like there's something to be said when we're told that we walk into a professional space mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we talk about these things and yes. that's it. And we only do these things and we yeah. have to show up like this with the tie or in our, our case, you know, with the right workout yeah, outfit on or, yeah, exactly. or whatever it is and that in itself is so stifling and limiting that we can't we and don't allow ourselves yep. yes we don't allow ourselves to to bring the possibilities and it just immerse ourselves in what we're doing yeah yeah and what it what it does it limits the person that you're interacting with this is what i found too yes. is if i show up like this then they have to interact with me like this in right? this frame right right yeah. And then they don't get to step out either. But when I step out, they get to step out. And we have no idea what this world outside this, off camera now, outside of our brain <laughs> exists. And then we just have this unique experience that could not have possibly been predictable, could not have happened with anybody else. And we go somewhere. So I, I tell clients or people ask me about my work all the time. I've never did a space, even the home I live in right now, that is totally me. It's so influenced by the partnership yes. I create with my, my clients. And this house was renovated with, with my girlfriend. So it went in a dr different direction than I would have made it. And that's why it, it, I believe it's so amazing. Well, I started to learn to select my clients a little differently. And, right. and I used to let them select me and I'd say yes to everybody. And now it's, well, maybe this is not really the fit. Maybe it's not really where I'm going to go. But when I select the client who select me and we kind of find this partnership, oh my gosh, something incredible comes out that neither of us would have ever got to, right? So it's allowing people to be 
themselves while you be yourself. When you create that space, it's yes. amazing what could come out of that. Yeah, there's something to be said, you know, for creating boundaries, but boundaries can become prisons if we're not careful, you know? Yeah. Especially, I think, for those of us that are more creative, it's it's not the same as when you're working with an accountant who is a little bit more linear and I will say square, don't kill me accountants out there, but more square <laughs> in their thinking. I mean, sometimes going through the alphabet just linearly just doesn't really work when you're trying yeah. to create something that is special. 100%. And then I was, I was thinking that as you're speaking, it depends on what the goal is, right? And when you put the word creation in there, well, I mean, how are we going to create if we're going to be following in boxes? Script? Yeah, mm -hmm. we know what the outcome is. So I didn't create anything, right? <laughs> All I right. did was duplicate. I mean, now nothing's original. Everything has been done. But the, our interpretation creates something right. fresh for the individual. And that's why when I work with clients, I'll say, okay, I, I see what you have. Let me see what you love. And uh, so we look at inspiration pictures. I go, don't, for, I don't care if it's a $12 million home, whatever. It doesn't, I just want to know what makes you excited. Okay. So we have this idea here. Now, my job is how do I interpret your aesthetic and what you love into your space and create something that works with all the rules and the techniques and the experience that I have, I can make it work. So it's influenced by that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to create something new together. So let's be open what happens in the middle, but we know what our, our sort of target is. We know where we're starting and we're going to land somewhere in here that fits for you. And this is why for me, uh, obviously the goal for me is an incredibly happy client first, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be happy second because I'm going to be happy because of the result of that. I mean, that's yeah. one of my love languages is uh, words of affirmation. So uh, I'm affirmed when, when a client is gushing about what they love. Yes, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm happy. That's my reward, right? Amazing. Love it. All yeah, of it. absolutely. Absolutely. I wrote down earlier when you're talking about that, that step of faith. Someone I heard it said one time that the opposite of faith isn't fear. The opposite of faith is certainty. When you know the answer <laughs> to everything. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So right? true. And there's a, such a limit that comes on when we're so certain about things so that that box you yeah. in right. with what you could have done with that project until you stepped out in faith and kind of just trusted everything to allow yeah. that to just have a give it, finally have some expression through you. You you know, I, I uh, the way I put it is, so, okay, so go back to me when I had this path, I had this kind of script that I was going to follow. Well, I asked myself, when was that created? That was obviously created earlier in life because I'm following yeah. it now. So, right, I don't know, 16, 18, 19, whenever I thought I had it all figured out. So now, in um, teen years, seven, eight years later, <laughs> many years later, and I, if I'm in a, I ask myself, if I'm in a stumble, a roadblock, I have a decision to make, would I, and if I could, would I pick up the phone and call 19-year-old Michael for the answer? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> like, he doesn't know anything, right? No. He no. doesn't experience what I experienced. He doesn't know. So how right. is it that I'm following his script? Yeah. How did he create the life that I'm supposed That's to be living right now? Good. He doesn't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> and was it That's... even his script? You know that. Those, oh, it wasn't. It was those really scripts for that society. are society. Yeah. Yes. Just yeah. Pew, 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 they just shoot us with all of these. You know, you're supposed to do this because your parents yes. said that, and they went through exactly. this struggle, so you could have this. And you know, I, I really resonated with what you said about feeling guilty for not feeling bliss yeah. because you were yes. achieving and you were checking yes. all the boxes. And, you know, I, I have blown my life up several times because <laughs> I've gotten so pinned in that I can't move anymore. And the only way to get out is just to like, just burn it all down. But yeah. I think that so many of us and, you know, from the woman's perspective in particular, where we're told, you know, this is your trajectory, um, implicitly, explicitly, uh, whoever tells you, but, um, you know, it's, it is a challenge to get, get to that point where you're like, I'm going to own the fact that this life that I'm living isn't mine. And I have to now decide here we go, Martin. Do I want to stay in the matrix? Yeah. Or do I want to break out of it and really start living for 
who it is I want to be and, yeah. and yeah. the life that I want to be challenged by and invigorated by. It, it, it's so, so, so powerful. The Matrix analogy obviously is on point. That's why that movie is so powerful in itself um, when you watch it from that perspective. But and, and here it's in the, the comment you made about what choice you want to make. I think it's so profound to understand that not making a choice is making a choice, yes. right? So you're making a choice anyways. We're, uh, manifestation is just the catchphrase right now. And, right. And, and I hate that people just use it so loosely. And what I say is, listen, you have to understand, we manifest all the time. We are, man we are the masters of manifestation. Whether it's good, bad, you like it or where or not, you are just doing, you are creating. I'm going to give, I'm going to go out. I'm going to, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to eat. I'm going to do that. You're creating all of this. So you don't need to learn how to manifest. What you need to do is learn how to manifest things that you want and stop yes, manifesting things that you don't want on purpose. Yes. So now yes. fine tune this skill that you just kind of randomly use all the time mm -hmm. and focus on it. Mm -hmm. This is why it works. This is how we're able to do it because we've been doing all our lives, except some people are just worrying. They think, oh my gosh, this is going to go wrong. This is going to go wrong. It goes wrong. Well, yeah, because you created that in your life, right? So um, obviously I'm simplifying it. But when you, when you start thinking about every choice, every not getting out of bed is a choice. So let me be conscious of my choice. And everything I'm thinking about and creating and I'm saying and I want for myself is what I'm manifesting, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. So let me just focus on what I'm manifesting. If I told you every thought you have for the next 20 seconds is going to happen, well, you're going to be very careful, <laughs> right? Yes. Right. You're going, to, you're going to pick your thoughts very carefully and you're going to pick things. What do I want? What do I want? Well, why don't you just do that all the time? What do you want all the time? And let right. it create. It doesn't mean you're going to get everything that you create, right? But what it means, that's the path you're going to move to and you're going to, you're going to not be thinking about other things. You're going to be choosing yes. things that are more desirable for you and you're going to be creating that. So going back to the circle about my career here is – there's things I've, I've silently wanted. I've worked in industries that I enjoyed and loved and, uh, and stuff. And, but what's opening up for me, you mentioned with uh, CityLine, is now I do TV appearances as for like two and a half years now, the design expert. I didn't anticipate that when I started renovating houses and, and Oprah. I said, oh, one day I'm going to be on TV. Now I'm actually, on Tuesday, we start filming for season two of Best in Miniature where I'm the judge. So it's a TV show. Cool where I did a full season and I'm going into season two now where I am one of two judges on uh, CBC and CBC Gem. And I'm being paid to be on TV to share my artistic and expert. Like, I didn't know the authority, that. right? Yeah, like, the authority, right? Yes. Right? So now my, my resume is like, okay, TV personality, TV, uh, TV show host. And it's just creating different things. I'm flying back and forth. I'm doing properties overseas. These are not bragging. These are just things that I no. couldn't have anticipated. And they weren't there for yeah. me because that's not what I was working towards. So I'm manifesting a career that I enjoy, that I love. But at the same time, I'm open to what comes to me and what's available to me is way broader than what I can necessarily anticipate. Well, Mike, I'm going to give you a second to brag. Like, just, just <laughs> let's, let's not, I'm, no, seriously, seriously. I, I just I want you to just, I want to celebrate this for a second. Talk about some yeah. of the stuff that's going on. Because, like, there was a time when, like you said, you kid from Jane and Finch, right? Like, you mean, like... Yeah. To yeah. be in the space to do these things, just like tell tell people where you're, what's going on, man. Like, what are some of the things you've been able to celebrate over the last, like, recently in terms of your career development? So, so yeah, so the the, the TV aspect that's opening up a lot. It's uh, really propelled my career quickly. Um, meaning the phone calls that I get, so the program. So, so what it's enabled me to do by doing the, the shows is kind of um, expand get broader so before i was pretty busy busy before the tv started but but i was myself and i had one or two junior designs to work with the assistant now i'm building a company now i have a team now i'm actually building something that kind of is designed to run with or without me it's it's yes. it's um i live in the fact that i'm my brand i'm my brand that's going to bring in the work and create these opportunities but the company itself is more than just me before right. it was me so now, now you're going to scale that correctly. Scale that. So it's a whole new learning curve, new challenges. And I'm, I'm so grateful right now. I have uh, uh, four people on my team, uh, three full-timers and one that are just solid and they're amazing, which are actually, I'm, I'm leaving from here to do a photo shoot and they're there setting up. That's blowing my mind right now, right? Where I can just show mm. up 
shoot, and I'm up, <laughs> right? So it's, it's, a, it's yes, another the level. Yes. yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Whereas before I'd be running, right now I'd be sweating it, grabbing stuff and flying through. So it's just leveling up. And, and yes. what that means is now I can now take on projects that are, the scale is larger. I can now sit in creativity maybe 80% of my day instead of yes. 30%. Yes. And, and so I'm now being challenged and pushed. So the projects we were doing are amazing. Like I said, I, I was in uh, Florida working on a home there uh, last week. Um, I'm working on this beautiful luxury place in St. Kitts on the island, which is just stunning and blue. So I'm flying out there to kind of plan it in. And then there's these projects on scales that I was afraid to imagine before that are yes. just coming to me. Yes. Luxury built homes. And I'm affecting people in, in a way um, so I did, uh, I, I, I was speaking, so I'm getting speaking engagements, which is pretty incredible. I was speaking at Improve, uh, reno renovation show that happened a couple weeks ago. And I was speaking to the audience. So we got in a conversation really about relationship with designers. And I said, well, this is for me. I can speak for me because when I started this in this industry, I didn't work with notes. I worked with me. I know how I show up. I don't know what other people do. And for me, the power is in that connection with people. When I, get called to someone's home, I walk into their home and even if it's kind of clean, it's still kind of mess. It's real. <laughs> I meet people when they're real and when they're, they're, their masks are as low as they're going to be and they're not yes. in their office. They're, so they're kind of vulnerable. And then I get to see partners and couples kind of have this dynamic. They want this, want this. So there's a little bit of conflict that starts happening and they really get real when I see little arguments break out and kids are running around. So I get to have conversations with people at their core and I, I make it a part uh, a note to myself not even to ask them what they do until after i don't care <laughs> i don't care if you're a ca or a bus driver it doesn't matter right now this is you this is your reality what do you want i'm here to help you create this lifestyle which is my slogan lifestyle design um create this lifestyle that you're aspiring to and we get to connect on such a level and then we take this journey whether it's two three six eight months and we get here where we create stuff and it's so emotional it's so powerful and i'm forever connected to that yes. when i walk away and that job's done and it could be three years from now they're sitting in their kitchen and they're just admiring or people come over oh i love this baby oh my name is going to come up and i'm yes. connected to this next level in their life which they're actually achieving things that they they they're it's usually a step up i'm fortunate people don't call me when they're scaling down even mm -hmm. if they size down it's still a, a very controlled financial scale down so i'm usually part of this new creation Beautiful. so so that effect and that to be involved is an honor i'm touching Absolutely. people's lives in that way and i'm, I'm per so i have to show up i have to bring everything I, I i have to make sure i give them everything and to go back to your original question i know i stemmed off so right now i'm at the point in my career where I, I'm, I'm dialed into that i'm dialed into my connection with people so much so i went out and got my life coach life uh, training because the conversations that i get into are pretty deep and I want to have a little bit more understanding of how and why these conversations are happening. So this has really helped me a lot. And, and the projects I'm doing are, 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 are great. The next step for me now is I'm, I'm starting to launch some, a little bit more brands. So uh, I just purchased into a store out here in Oakville, which I'm curating lines. I'm having my own line of furniture and bedding and things come out. Vignettes, I should say. Vignettes where you can, people who are not working with direct, me directly can buy Right now, I have three different looks that you could purchase from or the whole thing to achieve that Michael mm. Lambie uh, style, I guess. <laughs> and it's super great for those of us that are like, I really want something that looks elegant or whatever it is, but I do not have the bandwidth to slap all that together. Yes. That's I like, oh, I love that look. Exactly. And it's enab enabling me for now. So what I'm doing is I'm doing custom pieces for each. I'm going to do a custom painting, which is the theme for each one. So you can buy... Oh, this is great for me. For the first time since college, I've dreamed about this forever. I'm now going to be selling some of my paintings online. So I've, this has been a dream my entire life that I let go of. And I realized, wow. oh my gosh, I can create this. I can do this. Because yes. I'm doing paintings for clients. Now I'm doing a few extra ones. I just did this campaign with Audi, which was amazing, um, yeah. where they featured me painting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to repost it. It's in my train, but it fell down so far. Um, where it featured me creating this one painting, which the theme of it um, was kind of movement and um, luxury and expanding. And um, I delivered it to a client. So it's a free video series. And this one, I'm gonna actually going to be 
given away in a contest, a print, and then make it available online. It's my first one, and then Amazing. it's going to be. That's so exciting to me. It's so exciting to me that someone can just go online and buy one of my pieces and be up. And I may not even never meet them. That's kind of mind blowing, <laughs> right? Sorry. Yeah. The the funny thing with that, Miss Taylor, let you jump in here too, is that like you, you could do that, but now there's a gratitude that comes with being in a place where you can do that, and someone might actually want to buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Like <laughs> that. That's what I'm saying. It's mind blowing. You're gonna click on a yeah. something that I created, and yeah. I didn't sell you in it. I didn't tell you you need it. It's just you decided. Oh my gosh, I want that. He I created something that needs to be part of that. Yes. It's, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's it's incredible. But and and honestly, one of the reasons I haven't done it so far because I thought who's gonna want to buy my work? <laughs> like, <right? laughs> but now I'm doing it. Now when I do places, I'll create this piece for this work. Clients are happy. I'm happy, and I convinced this is the right piece for it. Well, well, then why can't I do that? So I got past that little roadblock in my brain, and so I'm excited about that. I'm excited to expand in that universe. A lot of challenges, a lot of work. There's not enough hours in the day of what I'm up to, but. I'm loving it. That's well, I so mean, fun. you're doing 95 jobs. No, there are not <laughs> enough hours in anyone's day to do all of that. But what I'm loving is, as you're sharing it, you're getting amped. Like you're, lo you are <laughs> loving the space that you're in. You're like, not enough hours in the day. That's all right because there's more days. And yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the win. That's what you celebrate. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I want to, you said something else that, well, actually Martin said it and you kind of tagged along, but talked about bragging and, you know, we have this whole issue in, you know, and again, this is, this is the way we're socialized, but we're not supposed to brag about yeah. what it is that we've done and what we've accomplished. And I want to talk about this because there are so many people out there that, feel like they've accomplished not a whole lot, but I believe that they feel that way because they don't give themselves time yeah. to bask in the joy of, I created something bask. and to talk yes. about it. You know, it's, yeah, it's well, not so bragging. True. It's celebrating the fact that I have achieved. It's not like, okay, check, let's go to the next achievement because mm -hmm. there's no joy in that. Yeah. Yeah, well said. So, so true. We need to, we need to put markation points, demarcation points in our successes so we don't get, they don't get blurred. And I'm guilty about that too. We move and I stop like, oh my gosh, and I, I recall. So the first uh, speak I, presentation I did, um, it forced me to put together my portfolio and kind of logically line things up and what I achieve and how I connect with clients. And it was like, oh my gosh, oh, I remember what this was. I, I need to speak about the stories of each project. So it, it forced me to go back and I realized, oh my, I never, there's some things that I did that I didn't really get to stop. Yeah. Take yes. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this was pretty cool. And this client was really, this client was in tears. I just moved on to the next project. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you said it's so true. When we don't stop, identify and acknowledge and put that celebration, that bask in what we've achieved, it can go miss. And then we don't feel like we've achieved stuff. That's hundred percent true. Because yeah. we are constantly achieving, we're constantly moving forward. Hopefully that's what we're doing. And that gives us our confidence that we can, right? Um, there's something, uh, we, talk, we talk about the zone that we need to get into where we're, we're really, um, you know when sometimes you're just operating on a high level, you're in a zone, you're going there, you're going yes. there, and you're pulling off stuff. You say, wow, and then there's times where you're down. And you're like, ah, oh, I don't think I can get this. And when you start having these doubts, you say, well, I, I, it shouldn't be, I don't, it's not, I don't know if I can, because clearly I can. I've been there before. It's how do I get there again? And how do I exist there? Like, how do I stay there? So it's identify. the reason I say that is identifying that we can operate at certain levels and we have control of getting there and we can be successful and we can achieve certain things. It's reminding us, I can achieve, I've achieved before. I was in zone before, therefore I can do it again. What's my next achievement? What's my next um, high point that I'm going to hit? When you start worrying, thinking about that, it's not can I, it's what do I do to get there? And you start yeah. learning this journey, right? Sure. What are my triggers? What are my thoughts? Who was I? How was I feeling when I was on, when I was motoring? Okay, I know yes. what that feeling is. Let me recreate that feeling. Let me create who I was being then. 
and boom, it's there again. You start training your body to go there, to go there, to go there and operate at this level. And that is so true. And this is a revelation for me as I'm speaking as what you're saying. That's so true with achievement and success. Who was I to achieve this? Who was I to get to success? Let me duplicate. <laughs> Let me be that person. I know it's there for you. It's in it. I did it. And, and you say, I'm doing this daily. I'm doing this weekly. I'm doing this monthly. It's just a rhythm of my life. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I use, I use that with my kids a lot too. Like, you know, they play all these video games and, and you know, you, you, you reach a certain point in the game and then mm -hmm. if you die, you go back to that checkpoint. You don't start at the yeah. beginning of the game From again. From the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I think in our lives, it's the same thing. Sometimes we need to pause at that checkpoint. So even if we feel down, we can go back to that checkpoint. We don't have to go back yes. to the beginning and yes. ask ourselves, who am I? What's my goal in life? It's like, <laughs> yeah. no, just let me just go back to that last success. Like, and then yeah. like you said, just like access every emotion from that moment to move forward, yeah. right? Yeah. But using that analogy, you know, there comes a point where you beat the game, you know? You get to the final boss level, you beat yeah. the boss level, and then you have to decide, do I wanna play this game again? Yeah. Or do yeah, I want to find the next game? And game. I think yeah. both are very, both are important. I think because sometimes it's like, I've achieved this. It's time to let this go. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to, you know, wherever I wanted to get it to in my career, my current career. And, you know, I'm not going to retire to Shady Acres at this point in my life. It's, it's a little early. Maybe I do want to try something else. Maybe I want to put myself back in that place where it's new again. I'm yeah, just yeah. finding a whole new experience, which I would guess, and if I'm putting words in your mouth, Michael, please say, but I would guess that transitioning from being a, a creative director at an agency that you are a partner in to starting fresh as a, a, a designer, um, yeah. even though there are elements that carry over, at the end of the day, it really is in a lot of ways starting fresh because you've got to make different contacts. You've got to essentially yeah. till the earth all over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, the way I describe it is I felt like I was fresh out of college again. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're you equipped with this knowledge and this training you just got, but the world's out there, you know there's so much you need to take on and learn, right? So you're excited, you're confident, I'm equipped to learn and I'm gonna learn so much. Like I said, it was a whole learning curve with contractors and suppliers and stuff and also, how do I relate to people individually? Because the biggest challenge for me is if I met 10 clients, it was 10 different personalities, 10 different people. So it required me to show up or to interact with them on their level. Because really, it's their home, their money, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a guest. I'm a guest in this process and I'm going to contribute right. to it. So I got to be mindful of that. And that was really challenging. I started learning about personality types and what's required. Some people are very controlling or some people... Our micromanagers, some people want all the details, and some people are saying, Hey, Michael, go call me when yeah. it's done, don't bother me with the details. And okay, well, that's just opposite of what he's doing with his last per client. Like, oh my gosh, I got right. shit, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 it is about the journey. But to your point, it's about when the video game, I love that analogy. I think when you get to, the, to that game, you decide, Should I play it again or just decide, um, Should I play a new game? That depends on what you're up to and what's, what's there for you, what's your goal, what is there for you. So if, if, you're, if your goal is not just to get to a point, but your goal is uh, evolving and learning and exploring and affecting people, having impact and so on and so forth, well, then you have to go on to another game, right? Yes. You just have to because your goal is not achieve. You're achieving go small goals, micro goals, but your goal of life, right, is, yes. is, is, is beyond achievable in one single task. Right. So this, this company, for me, it was obviously – Involved. I want to do great projects. I want to have bigger budgets and do great space. Now I want to. I want to affect people uniquely in a way that my mark is left so different than any other designer would have done. Now I want to be able to sh have a team contribute to that, so that there's not just myself is getting it. There's a team of who get this reward and get this effect. And then I realize, oh my gosh, this is not about me anymore. It's about the team and what we can do. And oh, we can touch people even that ones that I don't have as a designer indirectly with product, and they can buy this stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can launch lines. I get, it's just kind of because I'm just that's, up to how I can achieve. It just grows, 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 grows. That's, that's true impact, right? Yeah. 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 yeah that's true. Yeah. That's and good. let me just say this, sorry. And, um, sure. In all of that, 
the grand goal for me. I really, it's starting <laughs> to give, it gives me access. I was going to say platform, but that's not true. I don't have a platform. I'm, I don't have millions of followers and so on and so forth. But it's giving me access to people I would never would have access to before. And even in those little interactions, I've had some real powerful, really, really powerful consultations with clients. I've had some consultations. They're usually an hour and a half, two hours. Sometimes they've gone three because the last hour and a half has been really about life. It's been really about where they're at and stage because now there's an opportunity to kind of connect. And yes. we gotten, I said, there's been tears. There's been power. I've call, had calls coming back saying, client asked if I can come back and speak with her and her husband together because the conversation we went where we we're talking about relationships and they were on the verge of separating. We got into this whole journey that I went through and it just became that. I say all that to say is I got access to that <laughs> because of what I do, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I, I, that's not lost on me. That's so powerful. It's so amazing. So in what I'm saying right now, when I get a chance to go on TV or I'm speaking in front of people, I have access to people in a way that I wouldn't have outside of that. So what does that mean? What am I leaving? What's the impact I'm having on people? And it could be more than just a beautiful kitchen or a pretty cushion. It really can be. It's how I show up to them and how we connect. You know, and that's, that's brilliant because, and again, you are meeting people in their intimate spaces. This is where mm -hmm. they are naked. Yeah. And naked in terms of clothing, but of, of course, also naked in terms of boundaries, barriers. They're, all of those walls are down when they're in their it's home. Down. It's and amazing. So, you know, when you go in, and I, I would say anyway, I, I would suppose if you go in thinking scope of practice, designer, this is what I do, whatever, and you create that wall, and they're not sharing with you who they are because you're closed off. Yeah. No, you're both missing this opportunity. I mean, yeah, it exactly. speaks volumes that someone would say, we're considering separation, let's call the designer. Um, <laughs> right. But right. It, it, it's, it's powerful because I think it really says a lot about how well you connect and how honest you are about who you are in that interaction. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I'm lingering on this because this is something that, I feel like a lot of us do as movement teachers, but you don't yep. hear about it outside of of this realm in something that's so technically concrete. Like I have a friend that went to interior design school. Like that, that's that's a lot of freaking work. Um, yep. You just don't hear about it. So I, I think that it's one, brilliant because this is who I would want to design my home. Somebody that took the time to get to know me and understand me. But two, from a trust level, there's going to be nothing that you say that I'm not at least going to give um, attention to. And that's, that's power. And it's yeah. empowering yeah. as well. Yeah. A hundred percent. Kudos. Kudos. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I, I, I'm getting chills again because I, I'm so fortunate. I'm so blessed. And I'm thinking about, I could not be on this path right now. I could be doing something else yes. and what I'm right. missing and how I got here is so important. The most, the most viewed and, and, and replied to post I've done on my on page was that video where I just shared of myself and I wasn't talking about design. And it blew my mind, the interaction I got. <laughs> and literally, there were people from Canada State just DMing me um, how they connected or asking me questions. I had two different conversations with people I had never met who were really at that road, that, that, that same point, and yeah. kind of asking, I guess, advice. It was, it was crazy because it's my, my site, my page is about interior design, about my career and what I'm doing. I'm on there this post, the video came out that I didn't even anticipate was going to be what it was when they, they, um, Hakeem Optical did this, um, little profile on me. And then when I shared it, uh, the impact it had that, um, was really crazy that uh, it showed me you're allowed to share of yourself and people appreciate that and want that because outside of that Instagram, I'm a person, right. And there's somebody behind all these, um, yes. hopefully beautiful spaces I'm posting. And so I'm more comfortable now 
posting okay. just moments and shares and these conversations. We spoke so little bit about what's trendy, and we actually spoke nothing about that. <laughs> really, we can find that out. Look at some pictures, right? <laughs> yeah, man, you can Google that. Like, <laughs> right, right. Your story, man. Like, um, but that post that. was so <laughs> powerful. Yes. I, I mean, I, I watched it. I actually watched it twice. Um, well, I listened to it twice. I watched it once and I had it kind of playing in the background as I was fotting around doing something and I stopped and turned to watch it because the connection that you made, the tone of voice, it was, it wasn't just the words you were saying. It was like you were sitting next to me over here in this chair, having this conversation and it's one thing to be professional, I think. Um, and you know, that superficial level of professionality. And then there's, yeah. there's being professional because you're being honest and true. And I think what social media has done, it's, is that it's opened the door to the good and to the bad, to that arena where we are okay expressing ourselves as honest and true yes. but as consumers it no longer feels so voyeuristic it actually feels yeah. like an invitation to engage yeah. invitation yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. i have to really give credit to um uh uh sorry my, my brain just locked up here i, I had a, sorry make your point and then um it'll come back to me I was going to make a point and I was holding it and I lost it. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw a word out here because like, what we've been talking about without saying the word is authenticity. Yeah, yeah. Right? And yeah, like, there's a sense true. of yep. authenticity to what you would do because, I mean, like, we could look at your beautiful posts of your designs and your buildings and your Audi and all these things, but then not nice know the man behind the brand, right? So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so, like, knowing the man behind the brand is the type of thing that, that I like to use and highlight here. So, sorry, go ahead. Right. No, so say the director, Terrence Babb, um, credit to him, because when we were shooting this piece for Akeem Makhlis, it's for glasses, right? And, and he just started talking, and he was just asking me questions, but it was a conversation. So, although he was behind a camera, <laughs> it didn't feel like it. So, I give him a lot of credit, and he went there, and, and he started, afterwards, he's like, oh, my gosh, I got some gold here. Oh, my gosh, like, what, what, what? Because I wasn't expecting all that. We shot way longer, but I didn't want to stop, <laughs> right? And so then he was mm. editing. He goes, I, this piece was supposed to be two minutes. He made it five minutes because there was stuff there. And I'm like, what do you – because I didn't know what the expectation was. What We were just talking, so it right. just came out. So I was comfortable. So I want to really credit him for this little – give me the platform and the forum to kind of feel that I could speak. And, and it was very conversational. It didn't feel like this rigid profile, right? It was right. us just talking, and it became a little yeah. bad. So Brilliant. Yeah. There's good a, shooter. He was a great shooter too. I yeah, mean, he got it all. He got all of the nuggets. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. You said the word effect a few times, and I love that because when I talk to people, young people, old people, about what they want to do when they grow up, I always challenge them to think about what who they want to become. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a different dialogue than saying I want to be an interior designer. I want to yeah. do this. I want. Yeah. I'd say I want to be someone who affects people in this way and that has been a comment through this conversation you talked about people's emotions connecting with your gifts and talents and i think that is truly being alive when your life gives you a platform a canvas however you want to put it where all those things can have expression so you're doing great work man that's really it's exciting to see you so alive in your work i mean misty and i have been just loving hearing you talk about this the whole time <laughs> thank thank you so much yeah but i, I will say the way you just put that is perfect because it becomes something solid and tangible when you have a clear focus. So if you say, I want to be an interior designer, or I want to be this great hidden designer who, who, who affects people, who does these type of homes and so on and so forth, you now start to visualize that. And then the path there becomes a little bit more clear as opposed yes. to just an interior designer well, what to wear. Like there's a million different types of interior. What does that even mean? I don't have a clear path, but if I want to see me, I want to be doing someone who does condos, who does this and that and so on and so forth. Well, that becomes clear. Well, here's how you get there because you're creating this space and then be open to what's around it, which is even more powerful, right? <laughs> open Absolutely. to where your life is going to take you outside of that. But that, that destination is so key. You don't get in your car and just start driving. You say, I'm going through the store. I'm going there. And therefore, you now you know. Now, you might turn left and take a longer route, but you're still going that way <laughs> so yes. that destination being clear and focused is so yeah. important 
and sorry, and just to jump with that, just it comes full circle to the beginning of the conversation. When I ask you to say your name and your business, what you do was fluid, but who you were was very concrete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah, because I, I see for me, and this, this happened really, really, really in COVID. COVID, the, during the lockdown, it was humbling because work stopped. Mm -hmm. My jobs dried up and for three or three months, there was no income, there was nothing. Now, even though intellectually I knew it wasn't just me, it was 7 billion people or <laughs> a planet. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it was, world. Like, <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was a sense of failure there where I have no income. Um, what made me think I can do this? Maybe the high I was on, this is it. This is the reality. Like, everything started, all these doubts came into my head. And then I said, okay, what can I control? Because I can't control any of the other stuff. The only thing I could control, and I went back to how I started, was being me. And then it hit me. I said, you know what's missing in what I'm doing, Michael, is the branding. I spent 15 years as a as a an, uh, creative director branding and marketing for companies, and I didn't do that for myself. And it clearly came to me, I am my brand. I am different. No one can show up as me. And it's changed my strategy, changed my posting, it changed how I felt how I show up because I realize this is me. You're going to decide to work with me because of me. There's a lot of people who can make your house beautiful, but you're going to pick one that you can act with. Well, let me let people know <laughs> even before I meet them who I am. And you right. can make that decision if I connect. And this is my brand. And this is a, and I'm more than a designer. I'm this and that and stuff. And if you don't want to have these conversations, I'm probably not the guy to call, right? <laughs> but if you, if this right. is what you're into, this is, so I've started to brand me and think about this as putting me as, out as a brand. And I'm telling you, I cannot keep up with the work, with the flow, what's happening, with the you growth, the potential. It became so clear. And that, that goes back to you being, con the comment about being concrete. We're really understanding who I am, who yes. I want to be, all that stuff. And then I'm going to throw it out there and let's see what comes. And some amazing things are coming. Uh, I realized this just yesterday that Instagram has gone back to locking us off at the hour. So I have one oh, wow. minute okay. and 26 <laughs> seconds left. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> and so I'd sad. Hate, I know. I would hate for you to get cut off mid sentence as you're dropping more wisdom. So let's say our thank yous and goodbyes from now. Thank you so and... much. This was a lot of fun. We have to do this again. We I'm must. Down, I'm down. And it won't take this long this time. Sorry. Thank you for your patience for booking me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, do, uh, yeah I appreciate that. I've been chasing this guy down for months, Misty. Months. <laughs> well, listen, it happened at the right months. time, right? How about yeah, that? It happened at the yeah. right time. No yeah. doubt. Thank you so much. Right. Thank, you thank, you thank you so much, much for all of your wisdom. All right. Yes. Thank you. You guys so have a great day. Thank you. All right. Take thank care. you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.